Now in this lecture, we are going to be talking about Google's best practices and its best practice guidelines. Now to give you some background information, as I mentioned before, when I first started out in SEO, I would spend ages reading forums and blogs and websites and even books. And the funny thing is, in some of my first roles of SEO, I was given books to read on SEO by my line managers. Now, you may have experienced this already, or you may experience it in the future if you're learning this or studying this course to become an SEO. A lot of the times in companies, managers of departments or marketing departments, which SEO typically sits under, they don't know much about SEO. And to learn about SEO quickly, they go and read a book about SEO, which is probably because it's the traditional way of learning knowledge, you know, to read a book. Now, in something like SEO, that's not always the best thing to do because SEO moves very quickly, things change. So by the time the book has gone to print, some fundamental things could have changed. And also, which is more important, is a lot of that information that is written in those books is actually given to you by Google especially in terms of his best practices and some advanced things as well. Google does provide you with that information. So you really don't need to go out reading books and blogs and forums, which is a mistake that newbies do and which is something that I did in my career in the early days. And also there's a saying in English, as you say, you know, I, I heard it from the horse's mouth, which you should really apply it as an SEO. And that is my main or main tip for you in this lecture, and this is why I'm showing you Google's best practice guidelines. This is actually written by Google. If you ever have a question which is technical, you're not sure about something, you're not sure if you should implement something, or maybe someone's told you, oh, can we get rid of this on the website? And you don't know, your first source of information should be Google. And we will be talking in, the in future lectures more detail about Google's guidelines and best practices. In when we get to technical SEO. And as part of the course, I am going to provide you this document, which you can use as a reference point. But the things that I mentioned in this document, we will be going throughout this, the course of this lecture, or this, sorry, this course, the course of these lectures. So don't worry, you are going to be learning all these things and hopefully practicing it as, as part of this, as this course, because I really want you to practice things that you're learning here. If you've got your own website or if you're in a job role, I want you to practice the things that we're learning here. So Google gives provides you with something called Webmaster Guidelines, Google's, you know, from Google Search Central. It starts off with general guidelines. For example, make sure each web page on your website has a link to each other, which means make sure no web page on your site does not have a link on it from another page, which in SEO, which is something we call internal linking. Make sure your, your website has a sitemap, which we will be talking about, talking about in more detail when we get to technical SEO, as I've, as, I, as I've mentioned. A sitemap is like a tree or a list of all your pages. So include certain information in your, in your HTTP headers. Again, we'll be going through this in more detail in technical SEO. Have a robots.txt file which is really important. So this allows uh, search engines and bots to understand which part of your site you allow it to access and which part of the site you don't want it to access. Again, you can ask Google to call your pages. This is when you submit your site to Google. This section is about getting Google to understand your pages. So it says, make sure the site is information rich, include a title tag, alt attributes for images. Make sure you follow best practices for images and video, include structured data. We'll be talking about structured data in more detail in the technical SEO section of the course. Make sure Google can scan and read your CSS files. As we, men as we mentioned in previous lectures, the CSS is what gives the website a look and feel. Make sure Google can access your JavaScript files. If your website depends on JavaScript functionality and Google can't access that, that's going to be a detriment to Google. And it goes through and mentions more 
best practices to allow Google to understand your site. Then it moves on to helping visitors to under, understand your site. Again, it mentions using alt attributes, valid HTML, make sure your site is fast, make sure it's mobile friendly. These are all very important uh, Google best practices. And then it moves on to quality guidelines. This is where it starts talking about things you shouldn't do and things that you should specifically do. And this has been geared and really is aimed at spammers. As I mentioned in the early days, spammers were gaming Google. And as a result of that, Google progressed, it caught up and has become a better search engine. So one of the main things or one of the main principles Google outlines is make your pages primarily, primarily for users and not search engines, which is again, a clear dig at spammers. Don't deceive your users. So here it talks about specific things you should avoid. Avoid automatically generating content. This is a problem that many people have, especially big websites when they have, or e-commerce sites that can easily generate pages off the fly because they need to in terms of how the website is structured, in terms of how users can find products. A problem that these sites do is create you know, automatic, automatically generated pages. Don't engage in link schemes. We'll be talking about that later on in future lectures when we start talking about black hat techniques and spamming in more detail. Don't engage in doorway pages. This is when you know you create like a really thin content just for so you can put keywords on your page, which is not really good. Cloaking is when you show one page to search engines and then you show another page to users, which again is all about manipulating search engines, which is not great. Don't abuse structured data markup. This is when people put in the wrong things or the wrong type of markup in their on their pages to try and manipulate Google. Again, we'll be talking about structured data markup in more detail later on in future lectures. Okay, so in a nutshell, these are Google's best practices. And as I've mentioned, I will be attaching this document to the course as part of the course notes as a reference guide. And we will be going through the key topics that are mentioned in this document throughout the course. Okay, so you learn and are able to practice and you become a very well-grounded SEO. Okay, and as I mentioned before, one of the main tips as, as part of this lecture and throughout this course is to take it from the horse's mouth. Okay, it's a very important tip. Okay, guys.